QA, A level physics, quarks and anti quarks. So, this is the bit of the specification I'm going to be looking at. It's not necessarily in the perfect order. There's so much information. I'm not sure what the best order of teaching this would be in, really. But anyway, I'll chuck this information at you now. Hopefully, by the end of this topic, it will all come together. You'll see what I mean. So, now, there was a time when uh, things like the nucleus hadn't been discovered. Uh, and then Rutherford discovered that atoms have nuclei, and you've got electrons whizzing around. Uh, and then somebody discovered, uh, Chadwick discovered the neutron. And so we had protons and neutrons and electrons. And it was thought that they were the only possible particles and that they were fundamental. In other words, they weren't made of anything else. Uh, but then people started building these things called particle accelerators. Uh, and they discovered that other particles are possible. Like the universe we live in now is 99.99% protons, neutrons, and electrons, and also neutrinos as well, and a few other little bits and pieces, but basically protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, but there are other possibilities. And by smashing protons together very, very fast in the Large Hadron Collider, so much energy is converted into matter and we get this fruit salad of particles and all of a sudden the, the number of possible particles got bigger and bigger and bigger and so the pattern got much much more complicated and then two scientists uh, Zweig and Gell-Mann uh, independently came up with a, a pattern to explain what was going on and that pattern basically said that perhaps uh, protons and neutrons aren't fundamental and all of these other particles, you know, your kaons and your pions and your delta particles and all that stuff. But maybe there's another level and these things, these heavy particles are made of quarks. So heavy particles, which are hadrons, hadrons are heavy. Remember, hadrons heavy. Heavy particles are made of quarks. And quarks can't exist on their own. You've got particles which have three quarks, and they're called baryons. And then particles which have two quarks are called mesons. OK, uh, remember, hadrons are heavy. Uh, mesons are middleweight, I remember. So three quarks is a baryon. Two quarks is a meson. What quarks do we need to know? We need to know up, down, and strange. Okay? We don't need to know charm and top and bottom. Okay? It's not on our syllabus. Up, down, and strange. And then there are anti quarks, which are the quarks made out of antimatter, the equivalent in antimatter. So anti up, anti down, anti strange. They are the quarks that we need to know. Here are the properties of those quarks. Uh, charge, the up ones, they're up, they're positive, yay, plus two thirds. Um, the down ones are negative, mm. okay, minus a third. Uh, the strange ones are minus a third as well. Then the antiparticles have the anti-quarks have the same mass but the opposite charge. So uh, if an up is plus two thirds, then an anti-up is minus two thirds. Uh, a down is minus a third, an anti-down is plus a third uh, of, a, of a, an electron of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Uh, strange is minus a third, uh, anti-strange is plus a third. So that's charge. Mass, the ups and the downs have about the same mass, which is about a third of an atomic mass unit. Uh, strange quarks have a much bigger mass. Uh, strange quarks also have this other property called strangeness. 
um, and a strange quark has a strangeness number of minus one uh, and an anti-strange has a strangeness number of plus one. What does that mean? It's strange. It just it has this property and we've given it a name. We've called it strangeness. For want of a better name, we have called it strangeness. Now, we said that three quarks is a baryon. What baryons do we need to know? Well, a proton uh, is the only stable baryon. Uh, the other baryons eventually, in isolation, will decay into protons. Uh, and a proton is up, up, down. So if you think about it, if you add up the masses, you get about one atomic mass unit. If you add up the charges, you get uh, E, don't you? E plus. Um, uh, a neutron is up, down, down. And again, if you add up the masses, you get one atomic mass unit. If you add up the charges, you get zero. So they are neutral. So proton, up, up, down, neutron, up, down, down. Uh, and there's a, a little equation for the decay of a neutron. Okay, antiprotons, anti-up, anti-up, anti-down, anti-neutrons, anti-up, anti-down, anti-down. Uh, now, middleweight particles are mesons. They've got two quarks. Uh, and the two mesons that we need to know um, sounds like a, an episode of Doctor Who, this. The, the mesons that we need to know, we need to know about pions and kaons. Now, a pion is a quark and an antiquark pair. So up, anti-down is a pi plus, pi plus pion, if you like. Uh, pi minus is down, anti-up. Uh, and then there's two possibilities for pi naught, which is up anti up or down anti down. Uh, pions are the exchange particles for the strong nuclear force, at, at least between baryons. Baryons, protons and neutrons will exchange pions to uh, carry the strong nuclear force. Uh, kaons, what do we need to know about them? they contain a strange quark. So you can have uh, strange anti-up, anti-strange up, etc. Kaons contain either a strange or an anti-strange quark. So they are the mesons that we need to know. Come back to this, the only stable baryon is the proton. All other baryons will eventually decay into protons. Uh, this is an equation for the decay of a neutron. Now, that's what would happen eventually to a neutron on its own. Uh, it also happens uh, if you've got a, uh, an isotope which decays by beta minus emission, which is probably an isotope which has too many neutrons, so it's unstable, then that's what happens inside the nucleus and the electron is emitted as a beta particle, and we also get this anti-neutrino. Notice that there's a number of things which are conserved. The baryon number has to stay the same. So we've got one baryon number on the left-hand side, we've got one baryon on the right-hand side. So baryon number has to be conserved. Charge, yeah, because we are creating a positive charge there so we need to create a negative charge there because we're neutral on the left hand side. Lepton number, yes because uh, an electron has a lepton number of plus one, an anti-neutrino has a lepton number of minus one. So baryon number and charge and lepton number are conserved. Also uh, energy stroke mass is conserved. Energy can change into mass, mass can change into energy, but the total stays the same, which is basically what led to the discovery of the neutrino. 
Uh, not relevant to this equation, but strangeness is also conserved and momentum is conserved as well.